Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. Pastor Dean here at All Saints, and a blessed, blessed Easter to you. We are so glad that you're able to join us for worship. It is truly an unusual occasion that we're gathering in this way, but our Lord is present with us with the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And so we echo those words on this sacred day. Welcome and blessings to each of you. We begin our time now around those holy words. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We join in song. Our opening song this day is Jesus Christ is risen today. Join with me.
Holy Gospel for this Easter morn. The Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran, went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the other disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw the two lying there, one at his head and the other at the feet where the body had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned, and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, raised from the dead on this day, a blessing to us all. Amen. Well, he's risen. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. He's risen. And there's no other word to describe it but miracle, right? It's a miracle. Jesus is Alive, risen from the dead. But there's that word, miracle. And I don't know about you, but that's a word that I have heard a lot of lately, not just because we're getting closer to Easter, but it's also one that's often spoken of, grounded in our fears, in our grief, and our worries of what's going on in life, especially as we deal with the COVID situation. As time goes on, I know more and more of us have been personally touched by it. We might know somebody who's contracted it. We might have a family member that's been affected by it. We might have situations with our jobs. And in the midst of all of this, we pray. We pray constantly, and we ask. We ask the Lord for that miracle. Give us a miracle, Lord. We want a miracle. Seriously. We need a miracle. We do. A little girl was born to two loving parents, and she was a beautiful little girl. 
and she was perfect in every way with the one exception that she had a droopy eye. Her grandpa used to look at her and say, hey, that eye gives her character. But over time, the parents became more and more concerned. And finally, they took her to their primary physician, and then they went to a neurologist, and then they went through a battery of tests. And in the midst of all of this, it was soon discovered that this was a form of cancer. It happened to be a brain tumor. It was very, very aggressive. And they were told it would take her life. Well, in the midst of all of this, there were lots of worries. And the grandfather, the one who had always said it gave her character, prayed that there would be good doctors, good doctors that could take care of her. And her father, who happened to be an attorney, prayed that God's will would be done and that everything would work out. And then there was her mother, and her mother worried, worried so about her daughter and what she'd have to endure and whether she herself could make it through those days and weeks ahead, dealing with a scenario of an oncoming death. Well, they scheduled one surgery more. It was more of a last-ditch effort, more of a palliative type of a surgery to relieve some of the pressure that she was having on her brain, and it was scheduled for a Monday, and the pastor came by, the pastor prayed with the little girl and her family, and the daughter went in to surgery. It was a very, very quick surgery, though, because when they got in, they discovered that the tumor was gone, gone completely. And they didn't understand at that moment what had transpired before them, but the notes that the doctor wrote were very, very straight and to the point. No lesion or malignancy found. And then he penned the word, miracle. Miracle. We're praying for a miracle. We're looking for a miracle. Are we not? And in the midst of that time of waiting for that miracle, the response to the family was very, very expected because they were astonished and astounded. They were amazed and they were awestruck. They were dazzled and they were dumbfounded by this whole course of events. Well, friends, we've made it to Easter. It might feel as if it's been an eternity. You know, the last time we gathered in this place of worship in person was about the middle of March. And so we're about a month out away from that, and it feels as if it's been a year. It feels as if it's been a marathon, has it not, in so many ways? But here we are, Easter morning. It is a time for us to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. And we have lived through a lot. We've lived through the betrayal, of course, this past week. There was the crucifixion the nailing to the cross, the placing of Jesus in the tomb. And now, now as we read the text this day, we're at that Sunday morn. As the sun is beginning to come up and these women are now venturing out to the grave to continue to prepare the body to say their final goodbyes to Jesus. And as they approach the tomb, something amazing is about to happen in the midst of all of their pain and sorrow and grief and struggles. As they arrived at that limestone tomb, that is Mary, Magdalene, and the other woman, they approach it, and as they get closer, they notice that this massive stone that had been in front of the tomb is no longer present. And as they approach it, you can almost sense their anxiety going up a little bit more and a little bit more. That stone being gone. Why would somebody do that? Why would they be so disrespectful? Why? And there weren't words to describe what was going on. But I'm sure in the midst of this, they were probably dumbfounded for sure. Maybe a bit dazzled. Somewhat awestruck, perhaps. Maybe a bit amazed. I'm not so sure about being astounded, but 
probably astonished that somebody would do such a thing. And so they ran. They ran as fast as their little legs would carry them. They ran quickly to Simon Peter and the other disciple. And as they got there, they could hardly catch their breath, but they exclaimed one word, and that word was empty, empty. And so at that moment, Peter gets up along with John, and John, young John, begins to run as quickly as he can. He, he outruns Peter, but Peter eventually catches up. They're both huffing and puffing. They get to the tomb. The first one that goes in is Peter. And Peter begins to look around, and he notices that the body is not present. But he happens to see those linen garments being folded off to the side. That, that other disciple then peers in, sees the same event, and they are amazed. And they're wondering, what can this mean? Or what happened in this course of events? And they were astounded and astonished. They were amazed and they were awestruck. They were dazzled and they are dumbfounded. And the disciples leave. By this time, Mary had arrived outside the tomb. And she is weeping. And she is worried. And she still is trying to take all the pieces of the last several days and trying to fit them into this puzzle that she, she's not quite sure what picture it makes. And she can hardly, hardly get her mind around what's going in this situation when she happens to hear a voice behind her. And supposing that voice to be the gardener, the voice speaks, Woman, why are you weeping and she knew the voice and the moment she knew the voice the voice speaks out again and it's the word the word coming from Jesus Mary and she knew she knew it was Jesus the Christ the resurrected Christ and the amazing thing about this is that she is the first person to see put her eyes upon the one who was told about the one who was raised from the dead she's the very very first one and you can almost imagine what was going on with her at that moment. Mary is astonished, astounded, amazed, awestruck, dazzled, and dumbfounded. This is Jesus raised from the dead. Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to be with the Father. Every time I hear this story, every time I read this story, every time I experience this story, the gospel comes alive as if I or you and I were at the tomb. And every time I read this story and every time I hear this story, I am astonished and I am astounded. I'm amazed and I am awestruck. I am dazzled and I am dumbfounded. It is a miracle. It is. It is. In many ways, we are like those first disciples, are we not? I've had a few days much like them, or like the rest of the world. Sometimes I, I'm not sure what to make of the situation we're going through. It kind of feels surreal. Sometimes it feels a bit detached. What in the world is happening? What is really happening to us? When those women went to the body to be it anointed, they came to draw closure on a very, very challenging time and course of events in their life. They were living with death and loss and changes, and they were real, very, very real. How many of us have been caught up with the statistics of the day? How many of us, when we turn on the news, listen intently to hear, what the numbers reflect, the numbers of people who have passed. It's hard not to, is it not? And even though we are post-resurrection people, and we have our moments, though, of despair and worry, and even though we've heard the promise of God, deep down at times we may have our doubts and our wonders Sometimes we despair, sometimes there's pessimism. I read an article the other day that talked about people and their dreams. 
For some crazy reason, people seem to be dreaming more, and the dreams they have maybe are not the most pleasant of occasions. Because often people have said, I've woke up in the morning, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I've contracted the illness. Or I wonder, I wonder if anyone I know is going to pass away. And so we pray. We pray, save us from our unbelief. Save us. We need a miracle. I'm not sure we're going to die today. In fact, most of us will not. But someday, someday, we all will. We will die. We will sleep. We will pass. And then... And then I believe that we will be awakened. And as we are awakened, (laughs) my sense is that our spirit will probably say something like, holy cow, did you just see what happened? I can't believe this. This is beautiful. This is amazing. This is breathless, stunning. And those words, we're astonished, we're astounded, we're amazed, we're awestruck. We're dazzled, we're dumbfounded at the miracle, the miracle that has happened before us, that God has gone to prepare a place for us. And it is wonderful. It is beyond our comprehension. And it is real. The Apostle Paul spoke of it when he said this, that no eye can see, no ear can hear, no mind can imagine the good and wonderful things that God is going to prepare for us. That's you and me, for us. Do you remember the story of the cross? Dismas was one of those hanging on the cross. The story of this man, this thief, crucified with Jesus. I can see the two of them hanging there conversing back and forth in their agony as their life is drawing to an end. And Jesus, Jesus gives this thief a promise when he says, today you will be with me in paradise. And I'm not sure the thief is comprehending totally what Jesus is saying at that moment, probably going, oh, okay, okay, paradise, whatever that is, okay, okay. But then, then he dies. And then he awakens. And he's astonished and astounded. He's amazed and he's awestruck. He's dazzled and he is dumbfounded about what Jesus Christ has done for him. I've been in ministry over 30 years. I've been with many people at the very end. And the very last enemy to be destroyed is death, death itself. And in the event of the cross, Jesus, Jesus defeats death by being raised, raised from the dead. And the promise and the prophecy is fulfilled. God's gift, gift to us. 27 years ago, my best friend David passed away. And David had a malignant brain tumor. And as he got thinner and thinner, as the days and weeks went on, his beard got bigger and bigger. He started to look uh, remarkably like his grandfather and then a bit like his mother, what she looked like when she was younger, not that she had a beard, but that she actually was thin as David was getting thinner. I remember what the timing of the year was, and I remember eventually this cancer took his life. So still at the deathbed, so quiet, so quiet, that enemy. And I believe my friend David, like the thief on the cross, woke up. And as he woke up, he was breathless, 
breathless about the beauty that was surrounding him. And he was astonished and astounded. He was amazed. And he was awestruck. He was dazzled. And he was dumbfounded for what God had done for him. And I shall never forget the last conversation I had with my, my mom. She died about 10 years ago. She really didn't want to live in a nursing home. She really did not want to have cancer. In fact, our conversations were always taking her back to the home that she had had for the previous 25 years down in Florida. She said, if I could only go back to Florida, that would be paradise. If I could only go back there because it is so green there. And what I miss so much is that greenness of life. I wish, I wish I was there with the palm trees. She loved those palm trees. On December 2nd, I read from Romans 8 to her. And it's the synopsis of what Jesus has done for us in the cross. It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God. Who indeed intercedes for us. And who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love, the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. These are the words I read to my mother and then she drew her last breath. And she died. But she lived. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from the love. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And because he lives, we shall live also. Dear friends, that is the good news of Easter, the blessing that we share. And on that day in December, my mother celebrated her first Easter the one that Christ prepared for her. And I'm willing to bet. She was astonished and astounded. She was amazed and she was awestruck. She was dazzled and she was dumbfounded. The blessing of Christ. Dear friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us proclaim the love of Christ. And to that, all I can say is amen and amen. We gather in the song, Lord, I lift your name on high.
let us pray. Pray for those who stand in need of grace and hope and life. That the church may ever rejoice in this gift of salvation, be instruments of Christ's truth and peace, and extend the joy of the gospel in word and deed. God of new life, hear our prayer. That the world may be delivered from oppression and terror and violence and be filled with the peace that Christ gives. God of new life, hear our prayer. That all the baptized brothers and sisters of Christ through the waters of baptism may grow as God's people and walk in newness of life. God of new life, hear our prayer. That those who weep and are downcast and those who suffer and are sick may be met by the risen Christ who turns sorrow into joy. God of new life, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all the faithful, those who have gone before us, those who have passed, that someday we will join, join our songs, songs of praise, the victory feast that you've done for us, a God who triumphs over death, a God who gives us eternal life. God of new life, hear our prayer. O gracious God, hear our prayers. Receive them for the sake of the crucified and risen one, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you, as part of our extended community of faith, to join with me as we share the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and raise you to newness of life now and forever. Amen. We close our time this Easter morn with our song, Thine is the Glory.
my friends, go in peace and serve the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Again, words of gratitude this day for those assisting with our service, especially to Ryan and to Bethany and to Los. We thank them for their time and presence and the utilization of their gifts. Have a blessed Easter day. Enjoy this time with your family and know, know that our Lord, our Lord loves you and gives you the gift of life. Blessings until we meet again. <laughs>